A while ago, I mentioned in a video that I was planning to fix up my grandpa's old four-wheeler and sort of outfit it to be the ultimate hot wire fence running machine. And to my surprise, a lot of you guys showed interest in that. And even since then, several of you have followed up with me and asked me, when am I gonna do that? Well, today's the day. We're gonna drag the four-wheeler out of the corner. I've got a handful of parts that we can start putting on and we'll see what all it needs. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. already got a handful of parts for this project just some things that I knew the four-wheeler needed but I'm sure as we tear into it there's gonna be a lot of other things that I find so far I've got a new stator a new air filter a front master cylinder rebuild new front brake pads swing arm bearings and a new battery So right now I am reminded of a bit of advice I got back when I was probably like 13 or 14 years old and I was just getting into riding dirt bikes and how to work on them. And my friend's dad told me, never turn wrenches on something while it's dirty because you'll get dirt in places where you don't want it and it just makes the whole process uh, a lot less enjoyable. So the first thing that we need to do is get this thing outside and give it a bath and then we'll wheel it back in and start working on it. Well, it's looking a lot better already. I'm gonna roll it out in the sun so it dries off a little bit and then we'll get it back in the shop. Now that we've got the four-wheeler cleaned up and back in the shop, it's kind of like, where do I begin? There's so much that needs to be done as I've been rolling it around. It feels like maybe the front wheel bearings are out as well. So I think the first thing to do is just sort of a disassembly. I'm gonna take some of the bodywork off around the areas that I know I'm gonna be working. And then once that's tore down, I think I'll lift the front end up, take the front wheels off because I know that I have to do the brakes anyway. So we'll just kind of start there. Pretty brittle, I'd say that's gonna need to be replaced. Let's see what the air filter looks like. Let's see if there's any mice living in here. That's, that does happen. Oh wow. Boy, I don't even think that needs to be replaced. Yeah, that actually feels good. I'm shocked. Ah. 
Well, the good news is, is it feels like the wheel bearings are good. There's a little bit of play in the steering, but I don't think it's anything that's out of the ordinary or anything that I need to worry about. So since I'm up here on the front, I think I'll go ahead and start with these front brakes. And the first thing that I want to try to do is rebuild the master cylinder. As you can see, I've got absolutely no front brakes left here. And as I recall, it seems like I was having problems with the front brakes on this thing for a while. So I'm going to rebuild the master cylinder. I'm going to put new brake pads in it, and then we'll bleed the system, top it off with fluid, and hopefully they work. I think the hardest part of this whole process is going to be getting these two little screws out of the top of the master cylinder. I don't believe I've ever seen a master cylinder reservoir where these screws aren't stripped out. So we're going to get the impact driver and see what we can do. All right, confession time. So I was looking for different Phillips head screwdrivers to see which one would fit these screws the best. And look, this screw is completely loose. And actually this one I wasn't too worried about because the head isn't in terrible shape. This one, the head is destroyed, and look at that, nothing to it. So I guess we got lucky on this one. Hopefully the rest of this goes that easily. So that's actually got me wondering if that's the whole reason why these brakes weren't working because it was pushing air out of the lid. So this, these wires here are just for the brake light so that when you pull the lever, the uh, brake light comes on. So after looking this master cylinder over pretty closely, I'm, I'm like 99% sure that my problem was this lid wasn't making a good seal and there wasn't enough fluid in the system. So I'm gonna put it back together. If I put this back together and it still doesn't work, then I'll know that I need to take this apart the rest of the way and I do have the pieces that I'll need to rebuild it but for now I think we're going to put it back on like this and fill it up with the proper fluid level make sure we've got a good seal on the lid and then I think they're going to work okay now let's move down to the bottom of the brake system to the brake pads so first thing we've got a little cotter key here that needs to come off there we go Goodness, I need the impact. There it is. And we'll play nice, huh? All right. I know how to deal with that. And just to confirm what I was thinking from before, but these wheel bearings feel perfectly fine. Everything's just gonna come right off, right? Not quite. I think if I just work that out like so. Oh. There, we got it, kind of. Okay, fast forward a couple of days. What ended up happening in the footage that you just saw, I started putting the brakes back together and I realized that I needed a few more parts because some things were seized up and I wasn't gonna be able to adjust the brakes properly. So rather than film me, putting it back together, taking it apart again, putting new parts in and putting it back together again, I decided to just wait until I had the new parts so you can see how this reassembles, hopefully somewhat seamlessly. So let's do it. So you can probably tell by the, the pieces that are shiny here, but 
these adjuster screws down here were completely seized and that makes it pretty hard to adjust your brakes when those don't work so we should be all good to go now just throw these pads on All right, just like that. So you've got this pin that comes in through the back and then this is like a spring clip, which I probably should have went ahead and gotten a new one of that too, but too late now. So what you gotta do is you got a hold of it and push this in and turn it. to it right there somehow it worked and that is what holds those shoes on there i'm missing this plug here there's a this is a new one that i bought but this goes in there to keep water out and this is an access hole so that you can reach these adjusters and get this all dialed in i'm going to leave the plug off for now because we're going to need to get into those adjusters here go ahead and put this spindle nut on. So we got the spindle nut installed now. We're spinning free and I basically I want to put this access hole down at the bottom to those adjustment nuts and I'm going to slowly work them out until I start to feel just a slight amount of drag on that drum. Okay, that's perfect right there. I'm gonna leave the plug off for now because I wanna put the other side together, fill this system up with brake fluid, bleed it and pump the brakes a few times and then I'll probably have to set that adjustment again. But for now, like we're pretty close, so I'm gonna put the other side together. It's exactly the same as the side that you just saw, so I'm not gonna film it, but I'll pick the camera back up once I'm done. Let's get some fluid in this system now and see if these things work. This is a sort of long and tedious process, but basically what I do is I fill up the reservoir on the master cylinder, pump the lever as many times, you know, like 20 times or so. And then the bleeders at each one of these wheels, I crack them. And as long as they keep spitting air out, then I know that I need to keep doing that. So I'll do that several times. The master cylinder reservoir will get low. I'll refill it again and repeat the process. I'm actually starting to get a little bit of brake feel now, so I think we're getting there, but not, not quite there yet. Get this thing down and kind of see if we can test these out. Okay, so you see this tire locks up, that tire doesn't. So we'll adjust that a little bit so that they both lock up and then I think we'll be good. I've got both tires locking up now on my little garage test here and 
That's good. That, that makes me think that we're getting mostly equal pressure or equal braking force to each tire. Now I'm sure after I get this thing running and driving that after I drive it around a little bit, the brakes will kind of break in and things will sort of settle in place and I'll probably have to adjust them again. But for now, I think we can say that this part of the project is done. I think that's about as far as I'm gonna get with this thing today, but there's still plenty more to do on this four-wheeler. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.